The Nikon Z50 Mark II is Nikon's latest entry-level APS-C camera with many of the great stills functions from the Mark I with some advancements on the video side. Let's get into how to throw this into an Icolite 200DL underwater housing. So out of the box, the housing is going to look like this. You'll have a left-handed handle as well as standard size back button and shutter triggers. You can pick up some optional accessories like the dual handles for strobes as well as shutter extensions. But today we're gonna to put the housing together right out of the box. So the first thing you wanna do is flip the housing so the back is facing up and we're gonna to wanna to take off the back of the housing. To do so, just lift up on all three lid snaps. and remove the back. Put that to the side, and inside you'll find the mount for the Nikon Z50 Mark II. This mount features a quarter 20, similar to a tripod, and this will just go on the bottom of our camera. Place the screw inside the quarter 20 mounting point on the camera, and grab a flat-headed screwdriver, and just secure it on. You want this to be tight and snug. Any misalignment here will result in misalignments on the buttons in the housing. You'll also notice that there's a back wall on this mount, and that'll go right outside the screen of the camera. So once that's on there, put that to the side, and we're gonna make sure that all of our controls are pushed out and out of the way. And we're gonna grab our hot shoe and just slide it into place. Make sure to push it all the way forward. Then we'll simply just slide it into the housing and then realign our controls. Next, we can close up the housing the same way we did it before. Place the back on the back of the housing. Take the two side lid snaps over the hooks and press down simultaneously. And then the top. Check that all of the lit snaps are locked and you're good to go. Next, we're gonna move on to installing a lens, extensions, and a port. Just for an example, I'm going to use the Nikon 105 millimeter macro in conjunction with the manual focus gear. This lens works great in autofocus, but if you wanna take full control of your focus or make small minor adjustments to your autofocus, the manual focus gear is a great option. So to start off, I'm just going to remove the back cap of the lens, as well as the lens cap. And I'm just going to slide that lens gear all the way up onto the lens. All right, we're gonna put that to the side and draw our attention back over to the housing. And you're gonna use your in the included Icolite Zoom Gear Retainer Tool to pop off the zoom gear retainer, as well as the dust cap. Put that over to the side and remove the camera's body cap. Now you're just going to attach the lens like you would any other lens. Just find the white dot on the camera body and the white dot on the lens, line those up and turn counterclockwise to bayonet it on. Next, you can check that you have manual focus functionality by turning the knob on the side of the housing, and we do. So we can move on to the extensions and the flat port. So this lens specifically calls for a 28 millimeter and a 20 millimeter extension, as well as the flat port. Your lens may be using different extensions and a port, so check out our port chart to find what extensions and port that you need for your lens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is flip over the extensions and make sure that all three of the thumb screws are backed out from the inside diameter of the extension. I'm gonna run my finger around, make sure that it's clean. And I'm gonna do that for each of the extensions and port. Next, I'm gonna grab some of the included Icolite lube and put a little bit between my 
index finger and thumb and apply a light coating around the o-ring of the extension and we're going to do that for each of the extensions this allows them to slide together a little bit more easily but also allows you to feel for any scratches or bumps that are on the o-ring because you'll often feel them before you see them and we're also going to apply that lubricant to the o-ring on the housing itself. You can take some of that remaining lube and put it on the inside of the ceiling wall of your extensions and your port. Again, this is feeling for any debris, hair, anything that you don't want interfering with this seal. Now when you're putting these extensions and the ports together, you'll notice that the thumb screws also have corresponding pockets. Those pockets correspond with the thumb screws on the other extension or port. So to put them together, simply line up the three thumb screws with the pockets and press together. And tighten down thumb screws. Then I'm going to take my flat port and do the exact same thing, line it up with that pocket and press it together. These don't need to be super tight, just hand tight. Then we're going to go back to our housing, flip it onto its back, and you'll see that there are the same pockets on the housing itself. So again, we're going to line up those three pockets with the pockets on the housing. Make sure that thumb screws aren't sticking out into the inside diameter and just place it on top. And tighten down the thumb screws. You shouldn't feel any resistance while tightening these thumb screws. If you do, just back them out and realign. All right. Now, from here, you have a fully waterproof underwater housing, but there is one more step that I like to take to ensure that I have no leaks in my system prior to diving, and that is putting the housing under a vacuum. And to do that, we're going to use the vacuum pump. Very simple. On the side of the housing, you'll see a vacuum valve. Click the button to release the cap and place the barb inside the valve. and start pumping. All right, so I've pumped mine to 10, but the number that you pick isn't as important as making sure that the needle doesn't drop. So once you've pumped it to your desired number, remove the barb from the valve the same way you put it in by clicking that button, popping it out, and replace the cap. And I typically do this the night before a dive and then leave it under a vacuum all night. And then the morning, I'll put the bar back in the valve and check to make sure that that needle didn't drop. If you don't have all night, 10 to 20 minutes before the dive is fine, but I like to do it the night before so I have as much time to check for any potential leaks. So to check, just remove the cap again, place the bar inside the valve, and make sure that your needle has not dropped. Remove the barb. Replace the cap and you're good to go diving. Now it's important to note that while the housing is under a vacuum, you will not be able to take off the back or the ports because all the parts are sucked together. So once you're done diving and you want to take your camera out to charge or offload photos, simply just remove that cap again, place the barb in there, and there's a button on the bottom of the valve that will release the vacuum. If you're on a boat or somewhere where you don't have access to the pump, a small pencil pressed inside the valve will also release that vacuum. So take the barb out and replace your cap. All right, so that is how to put the Nikon Z50 Mark II inside an iGlide 200DL housing. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments below or shoot us an email to iGlide at iGlide.com.